Hey, family. <clears throat> What's happening? What's going on? Hope all is well. Hope all is well with you tonight. God bless you. God bless you. It's a song that I wrote. Um, and um, I love to hear that intro music uh, to uh, our uh, our live stream uh, worship services. Listen, I uh, hope that y'all are doing well this evening. Listen, I want to invite you. I invite you. Uh, please take some time. Take some time uh, to post this. Uh, please take some time. Uh oh, sorry about that. Uh, to post. Sorry about that. Take some time to post this uh, on your. Page, if you would do me a favor, I'm sorry, I was a, a little a little occupied here, just coming into our meeting tonight. Uh, but I want to invite you, invite you, please help me uh, share the good news with somebody. Listen, if I can get, if I can get tonight, if I can get a few shares, y'all, that would help me out so much. It would help me out tremendously. Um, so I want to invite you, if y'all would help me, help me uh, take some time and share. Uh, this post on your page. Could y'all do that for me? Share this post on your page. Um, I also want to ask you uh, if you would drop me a note in the chat box in the comment section. Let me know <clears throat> where are you tuning in from. It is summertime. We are in the uh, the middle of uh, some of one of the hottest times of the year uh, here in Houston, Texas. When I tell you it is hot outside, I mean it is the devil's breath out there. Let me tell you, <laughs> somebody, it is hot outside. Um, anyhow, um, but nonetheless, we are thankful and glad to be um, uh, here again for another word up. Wednesday, another word on Wednesday. I want to publicly thank um, my mentor and and one that I love, uh, Pastor Randy Young, who has stood in for me um, and, and got on this last week um, and has done so from time to time throughout this year. I want to say publicly, Pastor Young, I thank you. I always uh, try to make sure to acknowledge those that help um, shoulder the load of ministry and um, try to show love and appreciate those that help me um, in ministry here at Journey of Faith. Um, so I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Listen, y'all. Listen, listen. If y'all listen, somebody take take a moment. Take a moment. Help Pastor Steve. Help me right now. Help me, please. Help me. Uh, share this on your page. Share this on your page. Share this with somebody. Listen. You don't want anybody to miss out tonight on what's about to go down. I'm telling you, you don't want them to miss out um, on tonight or what's about to go down. Um, there's a word the Lord's given me uh, to share with y'all tonight. I want to go a little deeper into this um, on tonight um, in Psalm 42. And so as we uh, prepare to go into the word of God, I want to ask you to do that. Also, once again, drop me a note in the chat box. Let me know where you're tuning in from, uh, your name. If you have a prayer request, I want to invite you tonight. I want to invite you now uh, to drop a prayer request in the chat box for me. Can you do that for me? Uh, you don't have to tell your business, but you can drop a, if you would, uh, drop a note uh, in the chat box uh, for us to be praying for you. Uh, well, let's uh, get into the word of God. We won't, well, I don't want to hold anybody up tonight, but I want to go ahead and get into uh, the glorious, the wondrous work uh, of the Lord, our God, our Savior, and our King. Amen. Um, had a wonderful Bible study on this morning uh, and definitely look forward to sharing the Word of God with those of you uh, that are tuning in um, even now. All right. Glory to God. Let's see. We're going to Psalm 42. I'm sorry, I had my... There it is. And I'm reading from the NRSV uh, version of this text. Um, I will be reading from, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start. Let me see. Let me see. 
right. from the NRSV version of this passage of scripture, and it reads as thus. Psalm 42, verses 1 through 3. Um, no, you know, I, I actually want to, pardon me. Got my readers, y'all. Glory to God. There it is. All right. I want to go to uh, Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Uh, we're going to go to Psalm 42. And I will actually want to read uh, the full of this song. Uh, to kind of help give us a little wider context, right? Um, Sunday, we focused uh, in on uh, verses one through three, but tonight I want to uh... <laughs> okay, Mike, you got me. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Just saw my big brother, Mike, Michael Miller, Minister Michael Miller, uh, in the chat box. <laughs> I love you, man. I love you. Man. All right, I want to read for you uh, the wider chapter of, uh, well, the wider chapter of Psalm 42 um, here. And the 42nd Psalm reads as thus, uh, starting at verse one. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul desires uh my soul desires, uh, I'm sorry, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the, throng, with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving a multitude keeping festival. Understand that the core heights and read are saying here, we were on the front line of leading folk as Levites, uh, children of the house of Levi. Uh, we were on the front. We've been on the front line of leading folk to your house and shouting and chanting um, to the Lord our God, uh, keeping with the festivals that we celebrate as an Israelite people. Right? That's what they're saying there. Verse four, verse five. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. At the thunder of your cataracts, all your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me as with a deadly wound in my body my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually where is your god why are you cast down on my soul psalmist so says it again and why are you disquieted within me? And there was a repeat here. Here it is. Hope in God. For I shall again praise him, my help 
and my God. It's the word of God for the people of God. We say thanks be God. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to share you. Pray to God that you would touch and bless our hearts, bless our lives, bless our minds, bless our souls tonight, and all that you shall do. Speak to us, transform us, challenge us, change us. What a wonderful change has come over me. Father, help us to accept your will, your purpose, and your plan. Help us to accept your change, your challenge, your transformation in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Thank God and amen. Um, I wanted to share uh, with you tonight. Um, I really want to focus on this question: Where is, <clears throat> where is your God? Where's your God? Um, as we look at this text and, and we consider uh, the psalmist uh, that is providing this text here in Psalm forty-two. Uh, I would that you would consider that this text is written by the sons, excuse me, of Korah, the descendants of Korah. Uh, the descendants of Korah who were, uh, Korah who was a man um, who during the time of Moses uh, and during the time of their um, their exodus from Egypt um, and their entrance into the wilderness. Uh, some of you will remember uh, that there uh, were a couple of rebellions that took place and folk that wanted to raise up uh, against Moses and Aaron and wanted to lead uh, the people in a different way. Um, um, opposite of that which God had instructed Moses and Korah, uh, who is from the house of Levi, which means that they are Levites. Um, they are the Levitical priesthood, right? They are representative of the Le Levitical priesthood. Uh, they're representative of the musicians, uh, the elders, right? The scribes, they are all representative of the Levitical uh, priesthood. Uh, and thus, Korah was one who led a rebellion. Uh, Korah was one who totally went against uh, Moses and Aaron in that he rose up to try and lead the people. As a result um, of his rebellion, God decided that Korah, uh, would be shunned within the community. He was not exiled. Um, they still, he still served, right, uh, as, a, a, as a Levite, uh, but they were forced to serve in different capacities, whereby the mark on his family, on his household, on his descendants, uh, became the mark that... Uh, uh, became a mark of shame, a mark of uh, uh, of exclusion, right? Um, whereby you live in community, but we pay you no attention, and you're being taunted day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year after year after year, generation after generation. Uh, they are being mocked. They are being taunted. Uh, their own family, the Israelites, are, are being cruel to them. Why? Because you went against daddy. Because you went against daddy. Um, there are families that even do that even to this day, whereby uh, uh, we would consider in our 21st century uh, language, um, we would consider uh, Korah to have been uh, and his descendants, uh, based on the fact that the Korahites are writing uh, this 
uh, uh, one of the Korahites uh, are writing this song, right? Uh, we would have considered them in modern day terms as a uh, as the black sheep of the family, right? The black sheep of the family, right? Uh, uh, your grandfather was the black sheep of the family of the house of Levi, right? Uh, uh, because he went against God. So, uh, given the Levitical responsibility, um, we see, and you can see in the text, right? They talk about um, in the fourth verse how they led. Uh, the multitudes in procession to the house of God and have done so um, time after time. And yet, even in all of that, trying to still be faithful uh, to God, they still are experiencing uh, um, the consequence of their great, 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 great grandfather's um, decision to rebel, in essence, against God, and that is the God of Israel. I don't know about you, but I have not always been perfect. I don't know about you. Um, I have not always been right. I don't know about you, but I've not always made the right decisions. Um, and I have, and I am guilty, I'm guilty, and if you're guilty of this, uh, you ought to come clean tonight. Listen, uh, uh, deliverance is available to you. You ought to admit it um, and just come clean that there have been times in, our, in your life whereby you totally went against the word of God, hear this, for your life. There are times uh, where all of us uh, and if you haven't done that yet, if you have, if you're a young person that listens to me, uh, and you haven't, that you feel I haven't rebelled against God, you just keep living. One day, one day, and, and, and it is my prayer that maybe you are able to stay on that path. But as for the rest of us, I'm coming to talk to people tonight that have that know what it's like to rebel against God, to disobey God right? Not to live in obedience to God and follow God, follow his purpose, his plan. Um, you know what it's like uh, to get off track, right? You know what it's like uh, for the pressure of life and the anxieties of life and, and the different situations and vicissitudes uh, of life uh, that are coming at you and that are thrown at you. You know what it's like uh, to be in a place whereby and sometimes I'm trusting in God and I fully trust God and I know God's going to do it and then you know what it's like uh, to be in times and to experience and experience those times whereby I wasn't so faithful. I did not trust God like I should have trusted God. All of us, if we're honest, have experienced and lived through rebellion. We've had our rebellious stages. I've had my rebellious stages. And even though I stayed close to the church, I had my rebellious stages in the dark. <laughs> in this world of darkness, I had my rebellious stages where I got off and I was trying to do what I want to do because I, I was going against what God said for my life. And all of us have been there in that place. And that's exactly where the core heights are, uh, because at the end of the day, our decisions not only affect us, but let's say you're a family man or family woman, say you have children, um, uh, uh, our decisions can affect not only us, but our decisions also um, affect our families, our children, they affect our friends. Our decisions can affect our neighbors. Our decisions uh, can affect our church family. Our decisions, right, um, can affect your co-workers and your, the company that you work for. It can affect your business uh, because decisions are important. And all of us, uh, uh, um, are tied to someone else's decisions. The Korahites who write this psalm, um, it is what they call a masculine 
uh, of core rights. It is what they consider to what, uh, what is uh, being translated, uh, loosely being translated as a, a really great song. So in essence, it is a song, uh, something that is sang. They are, they in essence are lyrics. Uh, one of the things I shared uh, earlier this morning is that more is kind of like, um, uh, you, uh, if you read the text, if you're paying attention to the text, if you hear, listen to the text, and what is written in the lyrics of this of this text, uh, what you will hear, in essence, uh, uh, is modern day, um, uh, or you will hear ancient world blues, right? Um, the blues, or R and B, right? Rhythm and blues, right? Is what you hear in uh, the text here, uh, as the psalmist. Uh, is saying, I am in a place of longing, right? Um, as a deer who longs for a stream of water to satisfy the deer's thirst, I am longing for you, God. My soul is thirsty. I want to know tonight, have you ever found yourself, and maybe that's you here tonight, Maybe if you're listening to me tomorrow or next week or next year or some months down the road, a couple of weeks down the road, uh, at whatever time that you listen at this uh, message tonight, maybe you're in a place of desperation where you have felt like you are thirsty for God, you're thirsty for a move of God, you're thirsty for God to see God move on your behalf, you're thirsty, you are desperate to see God quench your thirst uh, for, for, for peace, to quench your thirst for joy, to quench your thirst uh, for whatever your need is, right, uh, to satisfy your need. You're you're desperate. You're in a desperate place, and you're wishing that God would come through, but it seems like God has forgotten all about you, and all because you are a descendant of somebody who made a decision some time ago to go against God in some way. Maybe you're that person that has gone against God and you feel like God might be punishing your children or punishing your family. I want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you tonight that you don't have to wear that guilt. Glory to God. You don't have to worry the guilt of, uh, of feeling, uh, feeling like God is not there for you because of the decision, because of the decision that your great great grandmama uh, made, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the blessing for all of us uh, in this day and time is that through Jesus Christ, we received the gift of His grace, and because we received the gift of His grace, um, His grace. I shared this on Sunday, right? Um, it is His grace. Uh, that forgives us, right, of our sins. His grace forgives us of our offenses. And even if those are offenses are against God, right, um, even if our rebellion is against God, uh, his grace forgives us. But then I love this because not only do we have uh, an experience and receive God's grace, but we also receive God's mercy. And it is his mercy that has compassion on us, <laughs> right? His grace forgives. His mercy shares compassion on us. His mercy is compassionate. And because we experience his grace and his mercy, because we live under the, disp the dispensation, um, that's a theological term, we live under the dispensation of grace and mercy, uh, uh, unlike uh, the Korahites uh, who did not have Jesus to come and give his life and stand in the gap and to make us a one with the Father as he reconciled us back to the Father through giving his life on the cross, right? Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. And so we experience, we accept, we receive his grace and his mercy through uh, 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 in order that, that God uh, would have grace uh, upon us and that God would have mercy uh, upon us, right? That God would extend his grace and we would have mercy. 
The Korahites cannot sing that song and they are experiencing the consequences. Why? Because God said to them very early, love the Lord your God. It was a commandment with all what? Your heart, with all of your mind and with all of your soul. That's all he asked them to do. Love God, love God with all of your might, all your, all your heart, all your soul is what God commanded Israel to do, right? Understand that they have received, uh, uh, they received that, uh, those commandments because God had made a covenant with them. He made his covenant with them. So uh, they are at the, mer they are at the mercy of their obedience to God. And because their great, 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 Great great grandfather uh, was uh, uh, was rebellious toward God. They now have to live out the consequence of his decision. The psalmist says, "My soul is thirsty. It's longing. It is desiring." Listen, I don't know who this is for tonight, but whatever you have been desiring from God. I want you to know for one, you're not alone. You would be surprised at the number of people that are in a place of desperateness, a place of longing, a place of desiring God to come in and move. Watch this. While being constantly taunted with the question, where is your God? Where is your God? Because you've talked about how God has delivered you in the past. You've talked about the miracles that God has performed in your life. You've shared with family members and you share with friends and you shared with coworkers and you told them about the miracle working power of God in your life and times past. But this thing, there's this one thing that you've been asking God to do. You've been asking God to move in and it's seems like God just won't move. God just ain't budging. And while you've been asking God, you have been under the pressure and under the duress of friends and loved ones and folk asking you, where is God? And some have even made fun of you. Uh, 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 you said you trusted in the Lord. You, you said God was going to do this. Whatever happened to what you said God was going to do, I came to tell you as sure as I'm standing here, I'm sitting here in this chair tonight, watch this, hear this, don't miss this. I come to tell you tonight that as sure as I'm sitting in this chair, whatever it is, You've been waiting on God to do whatever it is. You've been in prayer. You've been asking God to move. I came to tell y'all tonight, come to tell you tonight, and y'all better receive this. You better receive it. I came to tell you tonight, hear this, hear this, that God is going to do what God said God would do, whatever it is. You've been holding up before the Lord, and it seems it seems it's taken months. It seems it's taken years. It seems like it's been too long, and it seems like God. Let me tell you something about God, because God may not come when we want them, when we want Him, when you want Him. God doesn't move on our time, but God moves in God's time. That's called Kairos. His the the Greek word for God's timing is Kairos. K A I. R O S, a uh, kairos. God moves in God's kairos because your chronos, uh, which is another Greek word for chronology or what we consider to be time, right? Man time, God's timing. It God's God's timing. I'm sorry, God's kairos dictates chronos. Chronos does not dictate kairos, and so God moves in and out of. Chronos, when and where God wants to move. Hallelujah. And so watch this. When God comes through and God starts moving on whatever it is that you've been praying for, you've been asking him about, you've been you've been laboring, and seems like you've been crying over all night long, week after week, month after month. 
year after year, you've been asking God to move. I came to tell you tonight, hallelujah, that when his kairos meets up with his chronos, hallelujah, I'm getting excited now. When his kairos time meets up with the chronos time, watch this. Chronos has to bow to his kairos. And watch this. The old, old folks would say it like this. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He's on time. Ah, you see, because the blessing uh, that we have in God, who is the omnipotent one, he's the all-seeing, all-knowing God. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's everywhere, all at once, all at the same time, because he can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. I come to tell you tonight, hear this, y'all, man, this is good. Thank you, God. I come to tell you tonight that when God moves, God, God will redeem his time. He will redeem the time, all the time that you've been waiting and everything that the canker worm tried to steal from you, God said, I'll give it back to you. But what's this? What did I tell you Sunday? But while you wait, you have to do something for him. Uh, while you wait on him, while you wait, and while you're left wondering where is God, <laughs> you have to do you have to do a few things. You have to keep praying. <laughs> Prayer is essential to the life of a believer. The other thing you have to do is keep fasting. It's all right to push your plate back. It's all right to make the sacrifice not to eat, not to, to go without for a certain period of time because you're trying to get God's attention. You want God to know that you're serious. Hallelujah about connecting and aligning yourself with his will, his purpose, and his plan for your life. So fast, you got to pray. You got to worship him. Huh? For they, John said, they that worship him must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. Your spirit worships him. See, that's why I tell everybody, every day ought to be a worship and praise experience for you. Yeah, every day, all day should be a worship experience. See, I, I think, I really believe this. I really believe that if more people would worship God daily, hallelujah, if we would, if more of us would worship God daily, by the time you showed up for Bible study, by the time you showed up uh, for worship service, whether it's on Sunday or Saturday, Friday service, wherever you show up for worship, whether whether it's your church or another church, wherever you show up with other believers, with like-minded believers, with like-hearted believers, because of the worship that takes place in your life, my God, your worship will meet up and connect with the worship of somebody else. And when, when the people of God, hallelujah, come in together, giving God worship, worshiping him. Watch this. Uh, uh, when you start to praise him, your praise is evidence of the worship experience that's taking place on the inside. Hallelujah. Praise is an outward manifestation of worship that takes place on the inside. Y'all didn't hear me. Praise is an outward, praise is an outward expression of the worship that's taking place on the inside because of the grace, uh, which what we say in the Methodist church, grace is an outward expression of, a, uh, of an inward, of an inward uh, 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 event that is taking place, right? Right? You have to worship him and you have to praise. You got to keep praying. You got to keep fasting. You got to keep trusting. You got to keep believing. You got to keep having faith. You got to keep serving him. Because if you keep serving him, your servanthood will pay off. As they say, it, serving the Lord does pay off. Uh, 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 the Bible says this. This is what it says. The psalmist says this. Watch this. Look at this. I, I want to jump to something, right? Uh, because, uh, if, well, if you look at verse three, right? Well, the psalmist says, my tears have been my food. Anybody, I, I, I asked you that question. You go, uh, uh, there are times where you are waiting on God and you're so stressed out. 
You're so stressed out with the pressures of life that are eating at you and trying to make you feel like God don't love you, like God don't care, like God just gave up on you, like God just turned his back on you. Not just people, but the pressures of life will have you in a tissy fit, right? Feeling as though God is not there, and you find yourself in such a place of discouragement, a place of tears. The psalmist says, my tears have been my food. You crying so much that the tears go in your mouth and you and, and you have no taste. You have, you have no choice but to eat those salty tears day and night. He said, while people say to me continually, where's your God? Let me tell you something. Life has a way of chasing you down uh, and trying to make you feel like God is not there. Life has a way of trying to make you feel like, where is your God? Where's my God? God, where are you? Lord, what's going on? Listen, I've been in times and places where I said, Lord, I am at my wit's end. If you don't show up, Lord, I'm. I, if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Lord, if you don't show up, it's not going to happen. Lord, if you don't show up, anybody ever been there? You ever, you ever really experienced and felt like, Lord, where are you? Lord, wh wh why, why have you forsaken me? Someone says, I feel like you've forsaken me, and I'm on the front line calling out to you. I'm on the front line inviting folk to the house of God, uh, escorting them to the house of God, walking them in, I'm waving the flag. <laughs> ah, my God is an awesome God. I'm waving the flag. I serve the one true living God. I'm waving the flag, the flag. Hallelujah. I am a kingdom citizen. I am waving the flag. Anybody ever felt like, like Lord, that's all I do for you? Hmm. I, I, I'm going, man, I'm going hard in the paint, as they say in the basketball court. I'm going hard in the paint, man. And, and I just need you to show up. And those times don't feel good. They don't feel comfortable. Where you feel like God has forsaken you. I'm reminded that Jesus, you remember Jesus? I remember, I'm reminded uh, that when Jesus was on the cross and, and he asked God, he said, he's hanging on the cross. And he asked, he had asked God uh, before he went to the cross, he said, Lord, if it be your will. Y'all remember that he was in the garden. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, Lord, if it be your will, let this bitter cup do what? Pass from me. Y'all remember the story, right? And God did not allow the bitter cup, but God allowed him to go to the cross. Why? Because it was Jesus that said, here am I, send me alcohol. Nobody else could do it. Y'all didn't want me to get up on that cross. Y'all didn't want Pastor Steve going. Listen, I would have got off that cross in a heartbeat, right? I would have, I would have got up, I would have been up there and I would have been like, I am not going around, I'm not going down for you. Well, you know what I'm saying. I ain't going down for y'all. Uh-uh. Not, mm-mm, dude. Somebody else? Jesus said, I'm the only one qualified. He said, I'm the only one that's brave enough. I'm the only one uh, uh, that has uh, the mitigated call to step up on the cross. Look at this. And the carpenter's son, the carpenter who grew up uh, dealing. Man, y'all, come on. Check this out. The carpenter who grew up handling, who had, who had learned and nurtured the art of carpentry. Come on, man. Listen at this. Now finds his flesh, his hands and his feet. Hear this. In between the nail and the wood. The nail and the tree that carpenters typically use to make furniture and other, uh, other instruments, right? Jesus, the carpenter, is now being pinned to the wood. And he's on the cross. And as he's on the cross, pinned between the nail, hmm, 
and, and a wooden cross, a, a tree. As he's pent in between that tree, the text says he asked God as he cried, hallelujah. Just as the psalmist says, my tears have been my food. I can only imagine the pain and the agony that Jesus is in as he hangs on the cross for us. And the text says he asked God, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? If y'all will be honest, you have and are having, you have experience. And somebody today is living through a father. Why hast thou forsaken me? Just as the psalmist here in Psalm 42 says in verse five, here it is. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted? within me. I, I, you've been talking to me all. You've been talking to me, and you, you, you but, but, but I don't hear nothing. Man. It, 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 many of us are scared to live in the space of quietness because so much is going on in life. So much is going on around us, and and, and then so often we feel our our day to day life. Uh, uh, we fill our day-to-day -day life calendars with so much stuff to keep us busy um, and to keep us distracted on being in a place of quietness. Because I, I want to tell you today uh, that God also exists in the place of quietness. But when you're so used to all of the noise going on around you, you have to learn how to spend time with God even in God's quietness, because he's there. Watch what the psalmist says. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. What I want to tell you today is, your, is the enemy, the enemy may want to discourage you the enemy may be trying to get you to give up on God. The enemy may be trying to get you to turn your back on. The enemy, may, it, it, if he did it to Jesus, what did he tell Jesus? What did the enemy tell Jesus? Listen, jump off that mountain. Jump off this cliff. Isn't it, isn't it written, hallelujah, that he'll send his angels to catch you lest you dash your feet? And Jesus was clever. Jesus was smart. Jesus saw Satan coming. Jesus responded, haven't you heard it written? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. I'm going to say to you tonight, the enemy has been trying to tempt you, wanting you to give up on God, wanting you to give up on your faith, that even when you can't feel, sense, nor trace God, knowing that by faith God is still there, the enemy has wanted you to forfeit the blessings that God has for you by giving up on who you trust, who you believe, who the God you have faith in. But I came to tell you tonight, hallelujah, that the devil is a liar and and because of the hope, that's what the psalmist says, hope in God, because of your hope in the one true living God, the Savior, the creator, of the only one, hallelujah, that has the power to change and transform your life. The only one that has the power to pull you out of wherever, whatever you in tonight. Hear this. Your hope in him is what's going to keep you from giving up. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't fall prey to his tricks. Don't fall prey to his antics. Don't fall prey to his tactics. It is a strategy because misery loves company. And if I can help you to forfeit your blessings in God, that's how the enemy thinks, right? If the, the enemy thinks, if he can, if he can, He'll, if he can get you to give up on God, he can get you to forfeit the blessings, the purpose that God has for you, even while God has you in a waiting 
cycle in. Waiting. What do you mean, Pastor? Waiting on God to move. Waiting on God's time, his kairos. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something else? Can I tell y'all something else? I want you to write this down. Can I tell you something else? Don't be afraid. Can I tell you something else? Don't be stressed out. Can I tell you one more thing? Because you were anointed for this. Hallelujah. If, if, if you couldn't handle, if you couldn't handle being in, in this place of, of, of feeling like, where is God? God wouldn't have you in this place. But God is doing it because God is getting something out of you. What is he getting out of you, Pastor Steve? What he's getting out of you is he's building your, your, uh, your ability. He's building your resistance for trusting and believing him. That even if you can't see him, even if you can't feel him, uh, that you know he's there. Here it is. And he's working everything all out for your good. That's all I got for you tonight. You got to hope it here. Watch this. And the psalmist says, for I shall again praise him. Don't let your praise walk out the door. But praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Oh, okay. Y'all don't believe me. Watch, watch this. Right, let's, let's go to Psalm 150. Let's go, let, me go to, let me tell you. Psalm 150. All right. Psalm 150. The 150th Psalm. All right, let's go to the 150th Psalm. I want to show this to you, okay? Uh, if the Psalm is saying, I shall again praise him, my help. He is my help. Hallelujah. Jesus is my help. Oh, you ought to throw that down in there in the chat box. You better text somebody tonight. Text one of your, text somebody and tell them tonight, Jesus is. Hallelujah. Jesus is my help. He's my help. And my God, watch this. You got to praise him. You got to praise him. The 150th Psalm. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I got excited talking, running my mouth. Here it is. Watch this. What does the 150th Psalm say? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Praise the Lord. Praise God. This is what the psalmist is telling us to do, right? Right? Watch this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Uh, other versions, other ancient authorities will read, praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Here it is, verse six, y'all. Let everything that breathes, let everything that breathes, Praise the Lord. I like the King James Version, though. The, pray, the, the, the King James Version said, let everything that have breath, <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise ye. I love that King James Version. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything praise the Lord. Don't stop praising God. Even in the midst of quietness, don't stop praising God. Even when you feel like God has left you all alone, don't stop praising God. Even when you feel like you're discouraged, don't stop praising God. Even when you feel like God is not there, don't stop praising God. Don't let a feeling, my God, today, don't let a feeling trick you into thinking and believing that God is not there. Hallelujah. You, but why? But all you do is you get back into praising him, worshiping him. See, your praise comes from your worship. Your worship is our, our worship is our way of thinking about the goodness of Jesus. Our worship is is our opportunity to internal to internally reflect on the goodness of Jesus. The fact that if he delivered us from situations before, if he delivered delivered us from cruel and cruel people, cruel intention people, if he, if he delivered us 
from stressful situations and, and hateful bosses, if he delivered us from hateful church folk, uh, a lot of folk have experienced church hurt, all right? If he, if he delivered you from those situations back then, we say he's the same God yesterday, he's the same, he's, he's the same God today, and he's the same God forevermore. If he did it back then, he can certainly do it again. Glory to God. Glory to God. So while you wait on him, keep praising him. Keep lifting up his name. Keep serving him. Serve him. Hey, I, one of the things that bother me in, 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 in church in church and culture uh, is that, that uh, uh, there are only faithful few people that can that that serve. And those folk get those folk get those folk get weighed down. And, and a lot of time you get weary. I want to say that to you tonight. I want to say that to you. If you listen to me and you know, I don't care if you in North Carolina, I don't care if you here in Houston, Texas, I don't care if you a member at my church, I don't care if you on the other side of the world. And you listen at this this broad, this uh, live stream. Hear me and hear me well. Be not weary and well doing. If you are a servant of the kingdom of God, and there are times where you feel like the weight is on you, and you saying, "God, where are you at, Lord? Where are all the other people that say they love you, that say they live for you, that say they Christian, that say they believers, that say they disciples, followers of Jesus Christ? Where are they at? Listen, the Bible says, be not weary and well-doing. I'm trying to tell y'all something. Be not weary and well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Man, I can't begin to tell y'all the amount of blessing that I have seen on my members at Journey of Faith. For some of y'all that are watching, I, I, I have seen the blessing of God on your lives. Some of y'all, I'm going to just be, let me be very material here. I've seen you. I've seen you. God put you in brand new cars. I've seen you uh, purchasing property. And, and I, I've seen some of the other stuff. Y'all going on vacation and you wonder and you watch this and you to yourself saying man i don't even really know how i'm affording to go on this trip and do this but god made a way for you to be able to do it can i tell you all of that stems back to the fact that you have a heart to serve him it all stems back to the fact not only that you are a tither, not only you're a giver um, into the kingdom of God with your generosity, through your generosity monetarily, but you are a giver to the kingdom of God through your service, through your time that you give to God. Stand back and count the many blessings since you have been have, you have been being faithful to the kingdom of God. I guarantee you that if you step back and you look at the blessing, you count them up. It is my prayer tonight that God will begin to show you just how he's been blessing you, that God will begin to show you how he's been blocking the devour for on your life, on your home, on your family, how he has been blocking the fact that, that, that executives have wanted to make different decisions where you were concerned, where your job was concerned. Hear me and hear me well, hallelujah, that he will begin to show you give you a glimpse as to how he looked it. When they wanted to let you go, instead of letting you go, they let somebody else go because that person is not confessing to be no believer. That person don't even think about giving no time to the kingdom of God. But because you gave to the kingdom of God, God allowed them to step over you. And get, come on, man, I'm trying to tell you why you wait on him. And even when you feel like, man, Lord, why am I in this place? Keep trusting him. And keep praising. Don't ever stop praising him. Don't ever stop serving him. And that's if, if, if I believe if the core heights could say anything to us today, even while they experienced that, hallelujah, they didn't stop. They said we kept praising, we kept serving. If we can learn anything from the core heights, even though we were shunned, even though uh, we were stressed out, we were taunted, uh, people were cruel to us, we kept serving God. Hallelujah. Because if you serve him, even if you're serving him in secret, things that you do for the kingdom of God that nobody else may know about, let me tell you something. He that sees in secret will reward you openly. That's what his word says. So, my God, let me quit. Let me quit. It's 754. The Bible says deep. Verse 7 there. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. Deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. Deep calls to deep. 
you, 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 uh, you're in a place of depth where you're calling to the deep. You're calling for God to show up. You're calling for God to take you into the place of deepness in him. Hallelujah. Let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Let's go here real quick. And, and I'm done. Let's go here real quick. Psalm 91. I, I, I can read it for you better. There. Right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> okay. Here it is. I'm reading from the NRSV version of this text, all right? You who live in the shelter of the Most High, okay? The King James Version would say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God, right? Who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, King James Version would say, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. <laughs> will say to the Lord, in NRSV version, my refuge and my fortress, my God, <laughs> in whom I trust. Y'all need to write that down. You need to write that down. Because if you ever find, or when you feel like, or for those of you that are feeling uh, uh, that you're in a place of discouragement, all you got to do is pick up your word and go to Psalm 91. And you can say like the psalmist said, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you, hallelujah, with his pinions. <laughs> and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. God has covered you. He's got you covered. He's got to make the favor of the Lord surround you like a shield tonight. Hallelujah. Hence now and forevermore. Here's verse five. You shall not fear the terror of the night. Or the arrow that flies by day. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to keep on. I got to keep reading this. You shall not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow by day. Watch this, verse six. Or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. The enemy is coming at you, the enemy of life. You shall not be in fear. And even those that are pestered, pest. Uh, 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 pests, right? The pestilence, right? Even that thing that seems to be pestering you, you shall not be afraid of it, right? Uh, 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 verse seven, because watch what God does. A thousand may fall at your, at your side, right? 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you because God will cover you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're in war. You're in, you're, you're in the battle of life. And the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right? Against principalities, against high, spiritual wickedness in high places. Those things that seek to exalt themselves against uh, God. Uh, 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 but, God. But guess what? God says, <clears throat> even though those things want to exalt themselves against me, watch this. I, I crush them. Uh, they shall not come near you, my God, today. Listen, that's the word I have for you tonight. Uh, that as, 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 as life uh, presents the question, where is God? I want you to keep doing a couple of things for me. Keep praying, keep fasting, keep worshiping, keep praising, keep serving him. Keep going after him. Keep, uh, keep, uh, keep, keep going after God, right? Whatever you do, keep doing it. Here's the other thing I want you to do. Don't you be afraid. Here's the other thing that I want you to do. I want you to trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy way and all, all his all your ways. And he'll direct your path. That's my time. I got to get up out of here. Listen, uh, I, I want to share with you. Let me let me close uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, uh, Father, we thank you. We glorify. Well, before I, before I close with prayer, let me just share this uh, uh, with you. Uh, that as that thing 
comes and you ask it, and at times when you when you're confronted with it, where's God? Where are you God? Well, I thought you said God was gonna do this. Listen, you keep trusting Him. And guess what? You learn how to praise God in the enemy's face. And the enemy try to discourage you. I just told you, you go to Psalm 150, praise him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Huh? Praise him in his sanctuary. Huh? Praise him uh, in the firmament of his temple. You just keep praising God. You praise your way through. Hallelujah. And I guarantee you, he's going to show up. Trust him. Trust him in all your ways. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to uh, share a couple of announcements with you. All right. As you keep praising as you keep trusting, obeying him, living for him, moving with him, God's going to do some mighty great things for you. I want to share this with you. I haven't said this three times in my third Baptist closing, all right, <laughs> from my Baptist friends. Love y'all, man. Uh, listen, a um, couple of announcements I, I just want to share with you uh, on this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday, well, this coming Friday, um, I'm looking forward to hanging out with my young adults. Uh, at my church. I'm a young adult. Let me tell you something. I'm a young adult. Uh, so if you are between the ages of 18 and 44 at Journey of Faith, all right, at Journey of Faith. Now, some folk have different cutoff ages for young adult at their churches, and I ain't mad at that. God bless them. But if you are in between the ages of 18 and 44, I want you to meet me this Friday, this Friday, we're going to Trill Burgers, Trill Burgers. Anybody know anything about Trill Burgers? This will be my first time. I've heard a lot about them. I've heard it's a wonderful burger. Um, um, I will be careful about what I'm eating because I, I, I have a I have a diet. Um, uh, and I, uh, you know, I have a, I got, I got to have a diet that, um, well, well, my diet has changed from this, a lot of the stuff that I, that I used to eat. So I don't eat, I don't indulge like I used to um, and trying to be faithful to that. But anyhow, we're going to Trill Burgers. Uh, there's a, a rapper by the name of Bun B. Uh, some of y'all may remember Bun B. Uh, uh, for those of you that are not living in the Houston area. Uh, but anyhow, rapper Bun B, rapper Bun B opened up a burger joint called Trill Burgers. He's known for his bur these burgers that he makes. And he's opened up a restaurant. And so me and the young adults uh, from Journey Faith are going to go hang out at Trill Burger. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that on this coming Friday. Uh, meet me there at 6.30, 6.30 p.m., 6.30. Listen, if you want to go, and especially if you have my number, hit me up. Uh, if you don't have my number, you can have my email. Uh, my email is Pastor Stephen, uh, Stephen with a P-H. So that's P-A-S-T-O-R-S-T-E-P-H-E-N at J-O-F Humble, h u m b. L -E dot org. Or you can hit up our Church Can Happen Anywhere um, coordinator, uh, Miss Grace Coleman. Her email is grace at J O F the word humble dot org. So that's J O F H U M B L E dot org. Um, if you would like to go, please uh, hit one of us up. Um, and we would love to have you. I'd love to see you there um, on this coming Friday um, as we're taking our young adults uh, to go. And then um, uh, uh, this coming Saturday, man, I hope y'all miss it. This coming Saturday, and spread the word, spread the word. Uh, we're having a line dance. We got a line dance class um, that's going to be taking place uh, 3.30 p.m. Uh, to 5.30 p.m. this coming Saturday. Uh, our very first line dancing class. This is a part of our Church Can Happen Anywhere program um, under a sub-program called iFitness, iFit. Um, it's a fitness program uh, whereby it's all about trying to get encourage us as people to get to moving, uh, to get to moving. Maybe you don't go to the gym regularly. Maybe you don't go to the gym at all, but you can do some kind of moving. I know when you go to the family reunion, y'all like to jump in the line and get in the line dance. And, and then, 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 then. All right, so come have fun uh, this coming Saturday from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m., uh, all in the spirit of fun. Uh, we're going to we're going to have a line dance class, have a line dance instructor who's going to come in and she's going to do some stuff 
uh, with us. So hope to see y'all there. My family is going to be there. This is open to the family. It's open to, it's free um, and open to the public. So we want to invite y'all to come out and hang out with us this coming Friday. Um, outside of that, I hope to see you this coming Sunday, 10 a.m. worship um, at Journey of Faith. And you can tune in on all of our platforms uh, to catch uh, our uh, worship experience. Um, and my prayer is that all of you have a very happy and safe Fourth of July weekend as we all approach Independence Day. Um, I want to also throw something else out there as we are getting ready and prepared. Um, our golf tournament is coming up. And if you would like to golf with us, please visit our church website, J-O-F Humble, H-U-M-B-L-E dot org, and you can get more information on our golf tournament. All right. Uh, we'd love to have you. If you say, well, Pastor, I can't make it to the golf tournament, but I would love to sponsor a hole um, for the tournament. That means that your name will go on a sign um, on the course uh, whereby we can we'll get to see your, your your name or even your company's name. Maybe you have a business. Um, we would love for you uh, uh, and invite you to support us. Amen. God bless you. I want to say that a portion of those proceeds uh, will go to the Leo Adams Legacy Scholarship Fund, uh, whereby this year we will be, uh, we are electing a candidate um, uh, uh, to receive that award. And we will, I'm looking forward to um, to the golf tournament, whereby we will be awarding that candidate their award uh, for the 2023-2024 uh, calendar year, school year. All right. Uh, so anyhow, uh, hope you will join us for our tournament. Listen, until we all meet again, uh, I want you to be safe. Uh, my prayer is that God will cover you. God, cover us as we depart from this place, but not your presence. Help us, Father, to wait on you when we can't trace you. Help us, Father, to remain faithful to you, Father, when we don't see you. Help us, Father, uh, to obey you and, Father, to continue to praise you and serve you and worship you and go after you, Father. Uh, even, Father, when we may feel like you're not there, but God, help us to trust and know that you're there all the time. God, we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. All right. God bless you.